Hello everyone, this is Nolan with the 307 RPG Podcast, and I just want to say thanks to all of our awesome patrons. If you like our show and want to support us, you can find us at patreon.com forward slash the Forge Herald. Thanks everyone, hope you enjoy the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 307 RPG Podcast. My name is Patrick, and I'm your host, and I am joined by my co-host. I'm Nolan. And we're also joined by our special guest and good friend. I am Zach. All right, you got to get a little closer to the Hi, I am Zach. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. Oh, well. Zach is joining us tonight. He's going to be discussing some stuff with us. We're going to talk about our Scarlands campaign that Zach is in, as well as we're going to talk a little bit about Wizards, of which you are playing, right? Uh, yeah, I'm. I I have played a wizard, and you're playing a wizard I've in Scarlet. Played right? a wizard multi class, and I am playing a wizard now. Yep, a wizard blizzard lizard wizard lizard oh, blizzard the wizard lizard lizard wizard. Let's <laughs> see, yeah, it's too confusing. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. But let's kick off with news, and there's just not a lot for D and D, is there, Nolan? Not right now. I think we're on the verge of a couple of things finally getting out. Um, the acquisitions Inc. We are have seen the tail end of uh, a couple of releases. Uh, what was it? The uh, Stranger Things came yep, out. The Stranger Things box set, and of course, the Ghost Assault Marsh is out. It's live. I know that people have been. There's been some streams on that. Um, I think the big thing that we that we talked about last week was Baldur's Gate three, and if you know, I, I gotta say because I wasn't a Baldur's Gate person, I was a Diablo person. Um, I was always attracted to Baldur's Gate because I loved Dungeons and Dragons. I went this morning, I went back and watched the trailer for the game, and I'm excited to play this game because that trailer was just, and I said last week I was going to link it in the show notes. I didn't. It is there this time, I promise. Nice. I'm, I'm curious to see what they do. Um, it, it's got to be tough to create a game based upon something that somebody loves, but at the same time, if you go out to not try and make it your own and want to handle it, like, there's a, there's a difference between, yeah, I'm going to take that and make it better or i'm just going to do an homage and take all the little quirks fix them and just give it to you again regurgitated and i think that's what people want and i think looking at star wars as an example that's why people are pissed off we didn't want a new story we just want to see luke skywalker do luke skywalker things and wrapping up his tail and send him off in the sunshine and so that's what i'm afraid of and excited for in this one here they seem to be excited to tell the story and if you look at force awakens force awakens is very much a retelling of a new hope mm-hmm. you can you can almost put them side by side and say okay this is going to happen next and go ahead zach it was awful, <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> see and i was excited about force awakens um i was excited because you got to see these characters that for me they were they were my childhood you know seeing han solo seeing chewbacca um seeing princess leia i mean it was it hits you in the feels it does and, and i would say they did a great job with uh, the star trek remake Mm -hmm. Um, I I was not a huge fan of the original ones. I just missed the boat on them. Um, And then going to the movie, I was able to go and enjoy the movie. And then seeing the people that were true fans get up and stand up and clap and stuff like that. Like it it hit the feels. It hit the right notes. It told a new story. It made the old ones not feel unwanted. Um, And so I'm hoping we get that for Baldur's Gate. Well, and and I, I am an original series fan. In fact, my Sunday afternoons when I was a child was laying on the couch watching Star Trek, the original series. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course there are reruns at this point, but (laughs) because I'm not that damn old, but. Well, and again, I think it is one of those things. Don't mess with. It it was great. And it was great for a reason. Uh, Is it still great? Or is it just rose colored glasses? You know, it's, it's really hard to go back and play some of those old games of like, it's hard to play second edition. Yeah, get used to Thacko. And Thacko <laughs> is whack. That's um, not that hard. But even just playing some it, of the old Xbox games and stuff like that. Okay, it I, was I, definitely I, too hard it's for funny because a 10-year-old to, uh, I was probably like 11, and being like, how do these numbers work? And I was like, how do spells work? Go and lower. I finally was just like, you know what? I'm only going to pick people who use weapons. <laughs> I'm going to give them the weapons that do the most damage. And I'm going to give them the most expensive armor, and I'm just going to brute force my way through so the game. I remember when I played AD&D, AD&D Second Edition. And of course, they was a big deal then, and it was like I could roll the dice and just boom, tell you, all right, yeah. this is what I hit, this is the AC I hit. You know, it was nothing. Well, about two months ago, my my son Aiden was asking me, Dad, how did they go work? And I was like, Oh, it was uh, hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, and I tried to look it up, and I'm like, Wow, holy shit, that's confusing as all. <laughs> It is, it is insane. Know, when I was playing it, man, I knew it. You knew it. Yeah. It's like, man, what, I rolled a dice, a ten. Great, I hit this. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not anymore. Well, and I think that we were seeing that we've had the conversation before about the D10 system and how much I enjoy the ability to, there's a lot of times where it is like, well, can I make an investigation check? I'm like, yeah, it's a little bit of investigation. It's a little bit of intelligence. This one here might be wisdom. And because it's not the direct way of using the tools, sometimes I need two roles. I would love to say, make a survival check, make an investigation check. Sure. Perfect. You know, numbers, you know how to track them, whatever it is. It's a little bit of intelligence and it's a little bit survival you never been here before, it looks like a nasty mushroom, don't eat it, or you have no idea. So um, I like some of the simpler roles and stuff like that. Maybe mm-hmm. it's a little too simple still, but it's definitely a little bit better. So, I mean, we went a long way off of the route of Baldur's Gate, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it I think will, the only... in fifth edition, so... I think the only big news is that during E3, Mike Merles went out with a man whose name I do not remember, uh, one of the founders of Larian who is making Baldur's Gate 3. And apparently their big news is that there is going to be a tabletop prequel to Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, okay. I didn't hear that. And there's a little, I know there's a little bit of confusion in the air because it wasn't clear if that's what Baldur's Gate Avernus is going to be or if they're going to release another module. There might be something else in the works. And, yeah. and why not? Baldur's Gate's a great city. Why not have stuff in there? Well, and we haven't gotten our second part of it yet, too. Cause True. Because Water's Deep, The Mad Mage, and Water Deep, Dragon Heist. Maybe we do get something it, else It would be kind of curious to see, because it is hard to pick up a game, time. you know, a, mm-hmm. a, a video game, and be like, hey, you start in a tavern, versus poops at the fan. Here we go. You know, and they did a great job with Baldur's Gate, too, of Man. you're locked in a cage. You wake up. What's going on? You what know, could have happened? Yeah. How did you get here? You mentioned Best E3. Friends? I want to come back to E3, so don't don't let me forget that. Let's move on. Um, over in the Onyx Path Camp, um, Modifius was recently given awards for at, at Origins Game Fair in Cle- uh, Columbus, Ohio this year. <clears throat> um, Columbus. Columbus, Ohio. Pretty sure it's Cl- it may have been Cleveland. I could be wrong. Either way, um, they Vampire the Masquerade Fifth Edition was awarded Best Role Playing Game of the Year, as well as the fan favorite for Best Role Playing of the Game of the Year. So I thought we'd mention that, and you know, congratulations to Onyx Path, to the White Wolf team, yeah. uh, to everybody who was yeah. involved in V Five, because what a great way to resurge that title and bring it back. Yeah, and they are on the verge of some great things. You know, I, they, I think so too. Talked about the Werewolf game that's coming out. Mm-hmm. They've got the Bloodline. Er, what is it? Earth Earthbind Earth. Earthbound, something like something. that. Yeah, it's gonna be a brawler. It's, yes, it is. Like apparently, this is gonna be a busting stuff up game. Well, and I'm we had like a, a Streets of Rage, but it probably won't be. And like this that. seems to be a year for vampire because I know there's what we have Bloodlines coming out. We have um, there's two other vampire uh, co- uh, computer games coming out. We have the Werewolf computer game coming out. There was the Vampire Heritage board game that just Kickstarter that just finished. We should have the burning of LA or uh, London burning this this summer sometime, mm-hmm. um, and I'd imagine at some point I, I can't remember if it's this year. Chicago by Night should be releasing this year. Seems like it's, a lot of their work yeah, is finally coming. Yeah, a lot of stuff coming out. So there's gonna be a lot of neat stuff coming out for Vampire. But that's that's really the big news. Um, I do want to take a minute and say. You know Matthew Dawkins, who is the gentleman gamer, who's you know a writer for Onyx Path and has been involved heavily in a lot of White Wolf books from years ago. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure the oldest book I have that he was a writer on is Wraith the Oblivion, if I remember correctly. I think in the, the original edition. Nice. I think he was involved in that one. I could be wrong. Um, anyway, he has made it a point during the Onyx Path news. Uh, he does a video post every Monday. Uh, where he talks about, you know, the stuff that's going on in Onyx Path, all the things that they have coming up. But he also takes a moment to call out content creators who are doing Onyx Path stuff. And I just think that's really cool that he does that. And I know I've personally been heavily, more heavily involved on Twitter talking with some of these folks. And it's kind of nice to hear these names that I recognize being called out for just creating their stuff. So, you know, if you're a content creator and you're listening to us and you're doing stuff that is Onyx Path related, let Matthew know because he he has no problems saying, hey, check out this group. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, sure. That's really it for Onyx Path. I did want to mention, though, we mentioned E3. How about that cyberpunk trailer? I mean, you can't read this everywhere, right? <laughs> And all the movies I watched lately, now he's in the video games. Um, yeah, I, man, there's a lot that could be added to that. I think it'd be a fun RPG world. Um, God, that game looks smooth. It'll be, I hope it's good. 
we've had a lot of really awesome looking games come out lately that just didn't live up to the hype and that one's got a ton of potential the right people are working on it mm-hmm. um did you watch the gameplay because it released in no i did 2018 and what they released was very polished and it looked very good nice and that would be two years out from actual release and i thought it was but at the same time, it's pretty telling that they didn't show anything. So we might be getting actual gameplay later, you know, in their own thing, not at E3 where they have to share. No, I just watched that trailer that came out, what, last week from E3? Yeah. yeah. The one with Keanu Reeves at the end. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> you talk about a throwback to Johnny Mnemonic. Right? <laughs> yeah. Which is one of my favorite Keanu Reeves movies. So um, Cyberpunk has to be my most favorite RPG that I never played. Uh, I read a lot of, the, I never even owned a cyberpunk book, but I read a lot of like novels. I, well, no, not novels. I read a lot of the rule books, mm-hmm. um, just checked it out in general. And it was the one game that I could never get anybody to play because everybody wanted to play fantasy. They didn't want to play science fiction. Gotcha. And it's always struck me as just a game that would be fantastic to try. Yeah. I, I think we all got those little games like that and. I think mine's probably what Star Wars. You've mm-hmm. talked about the which like, we Star should Trek. do. <laughs> yep, Star Trek, Star Wars. I, I man, you know that that E three, the stuff they put out. That I really enjoyed the Jedi um, game, The Fallen Order. That Forrest Whitaker in it, so it looks like it's picking up from. Oh, Luke nice. Hope. Um, that looked pretty. I mean, I don't know. It looked rough. It was some like, of the like, animations alpha, were alpha real. The face rolls were face rolls. It was the running animation, which was so clearly looped, which is not a good sign. Right. Where you could see where he did and like jumps into like his gotcha. like the running pose, so they have to like. But I mean, it's alpha. That's just animation blending. We're just due for some good RPG do, do, do. stuff. I mean, it kind of like, looked like Sekiro and Little God of War four. So I was like, I'm sold. <laughs> on walls. I love those two games. I'll play. What else was the uh, Eldar Ring? Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, yes. God, the dark. So hyped. The Dark Souls that's, maker that's, and George R. R. And George R. R. Martin. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I was just like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all they have to do, all they have to do, is get uh, Kentaro Miura to do some art, and it will be the holy trinity of dark fantasy. You can stuck have, together. You have I just want. I want the. I want a world. By the guy who made Game of Thrones, I want, I want, I want lore from the dude who made Dark Souls, and I want art from the guy who made Berserk. Yeah, that's all I really want. Have you ever still. seen the artwork from Kingdom Death? Yeah, I looked oh up a lot. Oh my of it. gosh, that stuff is dark. That stuff is dark. The miniatures that that guy created are incredible. Yeah, so so I'm pretty excited for Elden Ring. So yeah. it's like two out of three. That's yeah. it. <laughs> Too bad. Miura's too busy playing idle games <laughs> instead of <laughs> making comics. That's funny. But yeah. Ooh. Anything else we're excited for? We ran through a good gambit there. I'm sure there'll be more next week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no kidding. It doesn't take much uh, to get us excited. No, it really doesn't. Oh, look, a new game. Yes! <laughs> yeah, got so much stuff to do and not enough time. Mm, that's the big thing. There's so many really amazing games out there, be it you know, computer-based, be it tabletop RPGs, or even just board games. There's just some great stuff out there that we just never get a chance to play because there's just not enough time in the week to, to play them. True. Um, and I would love to. In fact, if you're a board gamer and you, you need some strategy, you can always check out our buddy Elusive Meeple's blog. He's always posting all sorts of board game strategy stuff. So Yeah. All right. Wizard. We have come to our wait, final. Wait, wait, we got to talk about oh, Scarlands. Oh, so, oh, yeah. We got a segue into gonna... Scarlands into Wizard. Good okay. call. Okay. So last week we launched our Scarlands campaign, the Gauntlet of Spiragos. Gauntlet of Spiragos is a free adventure from Drive Through RPG. I'll have a link in the show notes. Um, you can. So if you are interested in the world of Scarn, if you're interested in Scarlands, you can download the Gauntlet of Spiragos. It is designed for four players. And it takes them level one through four. I can't remember if it's three or four, but yeah. Yeah, somewhere around there. And then there's two subsequent adventures that follow along, and I think they're only like five ninety nine. They're they're and fairly inexpensive. You can pick up the trilogy. I think it, it caps you out at level seven or eight. Right. Um, and you can f- kind of see how it concludes and set yourself up for more story. So 
I like Scarlands in that we are using D and D fifth edition rules. So it's a rule mm-hmm. set that we're already used to, and we were able to say, okay, guys, we're going to create these characters. And and mind you, we picked three strong players. It was so our Scarlands campaign consists of Zach, Nolan, and my wife Sheree. These are three strong role players that I know will quickly pick up the rules as long as she doesn't argue with me. Which, it's a big F. Yeah, it's a huge if. <laughs> and I can say that because she never listens to this show, so it's okay. And this she knows be because... She yeah, I know. To. Well, we've talked about it, so it's no big deal. Um, it, it's nice to be able to sit down in a new world that's not Forgotten Realms, that's not Greyhawk, yeah. that's not Kryn, and say, the rules are familiar. This world is fucked up. So I'm curious, what did you guys think? <laughs> we're we're a little early into it. Mm-hmm. Um, reading through the player's guide, which you should just pick up if you just want to like you want some some more rules. Um, I think most of it is very well designed. I think so too. Uh, I think the only quibble I have is like with two spells and. Like really, that's it. They have some great spells in there, um, and then they just have destroy metal, which is just <laughs> really broke. But evil, evil. Oh, I like your shield, boop gun. Oh, I like your armor, boop gun. All right, do stuff, fighter. Yeah, it's like oh, awesome. Two rounds, you're naked. Yeah, and it. I don't know. My example is that there isn't a battle master maneuver, which is destroy spell book. Like. Which would also be like really brutal. That would be if you just did oh that gosh. to a player. It's just like, well, I hit you with a sword, but he somehow hits you in your spell book and it's gone. Yeah, he hits but. you in the spell book. <laughs> it's better than hit him in the beam ball um, bag, I guess. So please don't do that to me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, because you're playing a wizard. So I'm playing. Wizard. Um, the world itself, though, was. I mean, you guys immediately were, you know, in this the small town or the small village of Creekfort. You move north and are immediately impacted by the divine war. I say the residuals of Titan blood running along. Right. I, I'm excited for it. I think it's neat. It's interesting mm-hmm. to see a little smaller party. Um, I'm happy I'm playing a bar just for being a little more versatile in it. I'm also excited for that challenge of just some of the arcane. But I don't know. It's interesting. It's, it's more Wild West. I guess it's kind of the feeling I got for it. I'm sure there's some established cities and stuff like that, but it, it feels like Forgotten Realms was so much of you're in a town, don't mess up. You know, you're in this place of lore, don't, you can't, we can't go bring down the walls of, you know, Kevnar's or, or Calvin's Karn or whatever and destroy the home of Driss Stewart and because it's lore. You know, you feel kind of like you're walking on something that you know can't happen where it's here. It's like, well, I guess maybe we don't burn down the... Wait, that's an option? Like, I guess, you know, like if you want guards after you and you want your life to suck, but you can definitely do it because nothing is sacred. And so it's kind of fun to be in this thing of like, well, what do you want to do? The moral dilemma is yours. And it seems like that's an issue for a lot of people of, you know, encountering the bartender that hated your kind for what you were and openly like, okay, this could get ugly fast if we stuck around too long and let people get inebriated or whatever. Yeah. And so that was... It was fun. It has a darker tone to it and uh, a little more freedom, which is just more rope to potentially hang yourself with. And I I do like the emphasis not on the darkness of the world, but how since it is so dark, you have so many more opportunities to make it better. Um, it seemed like in the 3.5 version that was really emphasized. Just like, yes, things are bad. There's nowhere to go but, but up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty refreshing because sometimes you get into worlds and it's like, well, you're, I mean, you, the world can't get 101% fucked. <laughs> so there's literally, <laughs> like, if there's no consequences for your actions. Zach doesn't sugarcoat it, by the way. Like, yeah. if there's no consequence to your actions, it's like, then it doesn't really matter what you do. And Scarlands, it does seem it's like, no, things can get better if there are enough people who will work towards making things good again. Mm -hmm. On the back end of a a great war, um, the world is rebuilding. It is what you make it. Yeah. Yeah, and and for those people who don't know, Scarred Lands is originally written by 
White Wolf, yeah. uh, old old White Wolf. Um, it was under their sword and sorcery label. Uh, this was their fantasy game, and so if you know White Wolf and you know the darkness that they create with like the World of Darkness yeah. games, it bleeds over a little bit into their fantasy world. Um, it was purchased by uh, Onyx Path. They are reproducing it and putting it out. There are rule sets for both Fifth Edition and for Pathfinder. Mm-hmm. So nice. you have the ability to play either way, whichever one you enjoy most. Um, and I know that they're putting out new product for it, which is great. So it is a supported game, and there is a huge community. Um, there is a – what's the word I'm looking for here? They allow content creation by community members, meaning people can write and yeah. put their their adventures up there in what, in what they call the Slurisian vault on drive through RPG. And that is all stuff that's created by community members. What I like, I don't know, it's it's fun to new a new world. Um, I've enjoyed looking at even the 3.5 stuff. Mm-hmm. The Rangers of Vesh were just fascinating to me of like in uh, so many games, like, oh, the Rangers, the Wolm Wolf, and blah, blah, blah. And because it is the Wild West, they're almost like, I don't know, like Texas Rangers. Like they have no jurisdiction. They go where they go. They have this authority. They are the wild men. They've seen the ugly stuff. We listen to them. And that was kind of a fun take on, you know, the paladins are kind of this noble order in their castle doing paladin things, and the rangers are taking care of the rest of the stuff. The druids being so distant from the world and still worshiping the titans because Mother Earth is a titan, and it's, I don't know, it, it, it's just the world is re- very rich, very flavorful, dealing with how magic works and, and pulling on the elements and, and abusing it, basically, um, having that be a, a thing for anti-casting. Um, I don't know, it, it's, it's fun to dive into something where there isn't, 47 books written about how the world's supposed right. to go and, and having that freedom is nice. Now, Zach, you're playing a, a wizard in our Scarred Lands campaign. A blizzard um, lizard. A blizzard lizard wizard. And this magic... This is how I make my characters. Yeah. <laughs> magic has consequences in Scarred Lands. Um, magic has direct effects, uh, which... Yeah. Uh, it could be you suddenly light up and everybody sees where you are. It could be you radiate flames or lightning. Or tell us about your character and what happens when your character creates or casts a spell. Uh, I got the good one. There are th- in the fifth edition uh, or the new Onyx Path. Um, there were three suggestions, but it does uh, encourage you to work with your GM to find one that fits. Um, we rolled for me of the three that they say to use. I got the good one. Um, when you cast an arcane spell uh, for a number of rounds equal to the level of the spell, you cackle with lightning. And luckily, I have advantage on saving throws and um, against lightning and resistance to lightning damage. Unfortunately, I make strength and constitution checks at disadvantage. So magic has its consequences, but there is power from it as well. Yeah, and there's, and like I, I like the lore; it's very cool. Like mm-hmm. there's some who like there's some wizards who when they start casting spells, their body heats up so much that yeah. if they were wearing armor, it, it would, would burn melt them. off of them. Yeah, so they and can't wear armor. So yeah, you can't wear armor, and maybe some other casters can because they didn't have that bane attached to them. Exactly. So it's very cool, and it's a nice, fun little way to attach a mechanical merit and a flaw to a character. Um, so obviously you don't want to get too crazy. Right. Uh, advantage on saves against all spells, but unfortunately you make strength checks at disadvantage is not balanced or fair. Because if a wizard is making a strength check, who, <laughs> strength check, who gives a shit? He's got bigger issues going on. Yeah, he's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah as like, I found out tonight. <laughs> right? You're it's hanging like, off a cliff. Things are already so bad. It's like, yeah, exactly. You, it's just like, there is no situation I can think of for a wizard where you should make a strength check instead of cast a spell. Yeah, I would, I would completely agree. <laughs> Especially so, when you have so many spells. Yeah. At this point, we have one episode of Scarred Lands up. It's Creek Fort. It is, you, you know, basically an introductory uh, where the three of you are decided to set off. Uh, there's really no combat in it. It's all heavy, heavy role playing with the three of you. Which, again, there's a reason. You know, the this 
you you are some of the three strongest role players in our group. So it's really nice to put the three of you together and just as a, as the GM to sit back and just let you guys go because you do. And at some point you guys go a little far and it, I know there was one part where Zach in particular says, can we drop it and move on? <laughs> <laughs> because somebody was beating a dead horse, Shuri. Um, somebody. Yeah. Um, and in the episode, as I listened to it, you know, there is a lot of darkness in, in it. You know, the world is directly affected by the Titan's blood and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys don't lack for comedy, though. I think you have to. I don't know. It goes. I think. I think if you are going to be like darkness, darkness, darkness. Yeah. I was raised on the streets fighting alley bears that's you know okay batman calm down like, yeah it's, it's, it's like at here. some point it's like no i'm gonna stand in this corner no wait don't leave you're supposed to ask me about my backstory yeah it's like so as we near the hard. end of our first episode and i'm gonna say this because it's been out there for a week and people should have listened to it already uh it, as I, I was editing it and i'm listening to it and i'm listening to you guys banter back and forth and this the situation is is that uh your character suvo and sheree's character uh, Greta have both are sleeping and we have Nolan's character. Um, God damn it. Vesserin. Vesserin. Yeah. I knew it started with the V um, keeping watch and he wakes up because he, something disturbs him and there is a naked lady and, and <laughs> Nolan's like, uh, so uh, kind of scratches his head. Uh, that, that's, that's a naked lady. That, 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 that lady's naked. And we ended it by Shri going, well, I would have totally got that. Uh, did, did you guys see that naked lady? She's like, I'm pretty sure I'd have recognized that. It's like, <laughs> it, it, is, it is so funny listening to you guys just banter off of that. And, and of course, in that fight, Suvo almost died. I almost went unconscious. Okay. Which would have been fair bad. Enough. Right. We didn't have a lot of time left. Well, and again, starting at level one is always scary. Oh, yes. Um, I think if you're going to be an adventurer, and it, it's, it's kind of like at a restaurant, your cooks are crazy, but they're the right kind of crazy. Like, you got to be weird to be willing to sure. work those kind of hours. I think you got to be a little bit like you're not sane if you're an adventurer doing, like, I would rather wash dishes in a pub and make a copper a day than go out and risk my life to deal with yeah. demon hounds and naked forest nymphs yeah. possibly eating you or whatever to <laughs> maybe find some loot. Like you got to yeah. be a little bit off your rock. Oh, yeah. So I think adding the humor into it is probably just self-preservation of your sanity. Yeah, well, you guys do a good job of it. So I can't wait. That's fun. I'm looking it forward to it and having I'm it too. grow. I, so. Yeah, so. I am too. Okay, check it out. Now, it's very fun. Now we can talk about wizards. So playing a wizard. So yes. So obviously, we as we've been doing, we've been doing deep dives into the different classes for Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. We have gone in alphabetical order. This is our last class, wizard, um, and we invited Zach here because he is playing a wizard, has played a wizard, and we thought it'd be good to have him here to discuss this with us. Mm-hmm. Um, so the way we do this is we talk about the three main stats. Then we try to do three best subclasses. Sometimes that's not possible. And then we talk about three different multi-class options, if possible, for this class. I think we all agree that there is one stat that is king. Nolan, what stat is that? Uh, definitely intelligence. Uh, your caster casting stat is intelligence. It's what makes the world go around for you. Um, unfortunately, one of the only the only class technically right now that uses intelligence. So you are by yourself as far as having it being a primary stat. Um, it's a secondary for two subclasses. Yeah, and then and, a dump stat for everybody else. And then it's a dump stat for everyone it's else. It's easy to be the dumb fighter, the dumb barbarian, the dumb rogue. The, the dumb, dumb warlock. <laughs> the dumb warlock. <laughs> the who, dumb sorcerer. Who needs to study when you get it The naturally. dumb druid, the dumb cleric, cleric the dumb. Bard. <laughs> so Arcane Trickster and Eldritch Knight. You're the only ones that, eh, maybe I read a book or two. And even then, if you're rolling stats or you use point by, I think for an Eldritch Knight, you're still better off dumping intelligence. Yep. So you can have a little bit more dex and a little bit more wisdom. Because an int save, if, if a caster is hitting you with an int save, you're probably fucked. But if they're hitting you with a wisdom save, not only are you screwed... But your friend is screwed too when he makes you attack them. <laughs> well, there's like, like two int saves in the game. Three or yeah, something. Yeah. And they're like so high level that if you're getting hit with those, 
You're screwed anyway. Yeah, you should have had a countermeasure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it so, yeah. should have never happened. So, into Dumpstat, <clears throat> except for Wizards. Hey, except for Wizards, and Int is absolutely king for Wizards. Uh, Zach, what would you think is, what would you say is the secondary sat for Wizards? Get con. Why? Get Constitution. Because in 5th edition, you're going to get hit. Mm-hmm. You're going to get outside of a few builds, which, which I will talk about, because I built, I built one. Um... What do you think? Your like armor class is going to cap out if you're lucky at 22, right. 23. And of um, course, there's concentration. And there's concentration. Yeah. If you're going to be swinging the big spells, nothing worse than having to cast the same spell twice because you faltered. Because you faltered. It's just yeah. You so don't you have could, those kind of resources. A wizard could put something into into dexterity, um, just so you could have an armor class of say 15 if you were lucky. You cast mage armor and i've got an ac of 18 mm-hmm. um but constitution is going to try to get hit yeah you're yeah. going to get hit in fifth edition if someone rolls a 15 on an attack roll they're going to hit you yeah straight up the goblin at level one can still hit a level yeah. 20 fighter when you can always be crit and you can always get crit you're for a wizard you're, you're going to get hit mm-hmm. yep so then that leaves us with one stat left. And oftentimes when we get to that last stat, it really just depends on what you want to do. Nolan, why don't you explain that here? Well, I think it does come down to AC um, versus saving throws. And that's almost always a, is what's going to be more important. Is having a 15 AC more important than having a 14 AC? Again, you're going to get hit. If you're standing in melee as a wizard, you're probably doing something wrong. Um, even worse having a hold person on your wizard or having a charm person on your wizard where they're helping the bad guy. The saving throws are, I mean, if you're a wizard, in my mind, it's all about control. You are disciplined. You are rigid. You studied your whole life for this to have that spot where it's like, hey, you're super book smart, but your functionality is zero against another wizard or caster of some sort. Uh, yeah. So it, it is a tough, you know, give them both a 13 and take a feet later or something like and that we're talking of. wisdom and dexterity right yeah yeah it's it, it's about you can make arguments for both and in, in my neck of the woods i would say wisdom is probably more important because of the saving throw um but again dexterity is you're always going to be attacked you're not always going to make the saving throw so um yeah flip a coin flip a coin it is hard. If you could even them out, that would be good. I know. As I was building my wizard, because I'm playing a wizard in our new D&D campaign, I think I definitely went with with, with wisdom. Yeah. My thought process was is I'd rather have that perception. I'd rather have that potential saving throws. Let's go ahead and go with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's rough. So yeah, it's rough. just real quick recap then. Intelligence is king. Yeah. Constitution is queen. And then it's a toss-up on what you want when it comes to either dexterity or wisdom. Yeah, and then I think your third stack, can, if you're deciding to <coughs> class something else or whatever, you know that that's kind of where it's going to go. But from a standpoint of a pure wizard, yeah, those two. Fair enough. Okay, so let's talk subclasses of wizards. Do we have one that stands out above the rest? Well, I think mathematically divination is considered the best, whether it's, whether it's the... Uh, whether it's something you want to do, whether it's fun for you or whatever, but no other class in the game really gets to mess with DM's roles like that, where they can just replace a role, and you get it at level two. And you get it at level two. It's, it, that's really next level fuckery for the DM. I mean, you know, yeah. you, Lucky gets pushed so much into that uh, broken feet, I ban it at my table type thing, where divination is like, I do this all day. Mm. Yeah. And, and so I think I think it gets rated the highest for me personally. It's not my favorite. I wouldn't play it um, just from a personal standpoint. And I think that's where the wizard is, is you could throw out all the subclasses and you're still a wizard and it's good. Right. And that's where yeah. we get to be picky on these here. You know, yeah. they're, they're all probably OK because you're still a wizard. But that one kind of mm-hmm. jumps out as like I'm replacing roles of the DM. I'm, I'm, I'm altering. We're talking that is a lich right there i have a one in my day i cast feeble mind guess what he can no longer function as anything because i replaced your die no legendary saves no nothing like that you know like it's just like great we found mm-hmm. boom yeah. and so it, it gets a little broken and it would be difficult to dm against i can imagine zach do you agree yeah uh wizard is strange since there's so many subclasses and since wiz- schools I guess, schools and wizard is already 
like Wizards the King of non-combat casting. Mm -hmm. So you could have a a wizard, uh, like a transmuter, and you take skilled and you have a bunch of tool proficiencies and like every 10 minutes you're casting like create or fabricate and it doesn't matter that there's destroy metal in scarred lands because you give a transmuter five minutes and he has plate armor for the whole party and he gives someone his transmuter stone and he goes yeah at any point you can uh click this and you've got true sight which is a seventh level spell and you can just have it right now. There's something to be said about that. Absolutely. And it, it's hard because an evoker can do that. An abjurer can't do that. A diviner can't do that. But in Dungeons and Dragons, I think you're usually going to be in combat. An evoker is always good. You can always blow something right. up. You can drop a fireball and it's like, Sorcerer has to be like, well, I can't drop it right here because I might like I might hit this person, so I'm only going to be able to hit three of the enemies. And the evoker goes, yeah, I'm going to drop meteor shower and sculpt it's the over ground. a mile long, and none of my friends are going to get hurt. Yeah. So there's that abjure. If you wanted to destroy another spellcaster, you pick abjure, and you just kind of that wizard's wizard duel. Wizard duel, yeah. It's like counterspell. It's like I don't care. I cast counterspell. Well, the, the War Wizard came out, and it has a, uh, it doesn't have a school. It's just a little bit more designed for combat. Yeah. And you see it still just still be every bit as effective as a wizard. Yeah. Um, and, it, and so there's it, that. It, like, it can depend on your campaign. You know, illusion yeah. gets broken where your illusions become real manifestations. Yeah. You cast Major Image, and you can make it real. And Major Image doesn't go away after you cast it at 6th level. So all of a sudden you have this So for a minute, already. you can have... You there, right? Conjuration, uh, you know, you start dabbling with a little bit of druid or something like that. I mean, I, yeah. w- I would not want to be the DM that says, Okay, everybody roll initiative. Boom, I summon 32 wolves. Okay, so we'll get back to you in an hour. Let me know yeah. what happens. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I mean, it's just you're talking game changing, breaking, halting, altering magic. Um, and yeah, that wizards can do. Yeah, yeah. you want to you want to be king of the ads. You know, you can play a conjurer, or you can play a druid who can also do that. <laughs> I, I think that's that, good. I think that's in the, that realm of divination starts breaking the game a little bit. Evoker makes quality of life insanely easy as far as I don't have to aim my spells and I start to hit harder. So if you are the blaster caster, it yeah. really accelerates. Um, I'm a huge fan of abjuration. Um, I come from the world of Warcraft school of thought of uh, you do zero DPS if you're dead. And so they have a really good defensive cool kit, toolkit built yeah. in so I can focus more on offensive spells. Um, illusion, I think, has got to be absolutely insane. I just, yeah. I mean, I just, there's just some of that stuff that I think, that I think they're all good. I mean, that it's, mm-hmm. you could you could pick the worst wizard one and it's probably still better than a sorcerer. Because it's, yeah. it's still a wizard. Like <laughs> they didn't invite it. me for the sorcerer because I'd have ran it for eight hours. <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> kidding. <laughs> it has gotten better with the divine soul. It got better. Okay, because yeah, it's to steal a... spells from he... another class. <laughs> <'cause it has laughs> spells. So now it's a, it's a hybrid cleric to get better. But anyway, um, yeah, I, there's probably three or four in there that are good. I, it can be very much theme. I would not want to deal with an, an, an enhancement style enchantment wizard. Uh, in a espionage type thing where they're just mind melding people, you know, of just yeah. believing what they want to believe, and like, God, you want to talk about a scary spy, you know, and, and or a politician, you know, I mean, just you could get carried away with some of that stuff of a non combat based game. So, I don't know. Yeah. Given the we, magic that's out there, the fact that Faerun even completely exists at all, it blows my mind. Like, cost <laughs> should have no bearing. I mean, yeah. you get an alchemist jug, what, we did the math on honey. You oh, know? yeah, we did the math on honey. In so, one I mean, month, you could do what a normal uh, bee colony does in, bee like colony a year. does in a year. And I was oh, just geez. like, oh, my God. So, I mean, it, it just gets into a realm of, like, well, you did this. You can't grapple a mastodon. It's like, but over here, he's breaking physics. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, it's like, it's like <laughs> the Neely guy because it's like, okay, I cast mm-hmm. Levitate and he floats in the air. Oh, we're cool with that. Oh, we're cool with that one. Like the fighters yeah, are cool with that one. <laughs> is yeah. it, uh, Wizards, yep. Wizards great. We haven't seen a lot of them at our table um, outside of you guys here at the table currently. I'm mm-hmm, um, yeah. getting to play one starting out, getting to play one in a couple areas. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Blade Singer. I think it. Yes, you are. I don't think it's as good as it was in past editions, but I like Melee. 
Um, and again, it is fun. It, to- it's totally a, a blast until you get squashed. Yeah. And you're going to get crit on until you get blur or foresight or whatever. And then it's, you yeah. know, one in 400 or something. Right. right. Yeah. Mathematically, a dragon still breathe fire. You still got to get out of this. I mean, you know, still get, yeah. You, you can counter him pretty easy, but there's something about one day he's just going to like touch his belt and cast anti magic zone and walk up to the wizard and be like, let's do a little bitch and pulls out his sword. <laughs> like, I'm still good with this thing. Like, don't forget, I'm, you know, I'm yeah. like elf pants. <laughs> so. Like elf. Um, I think Blade Singer is, I, I like Blade Singer. I think it's very fun, and I think it really captures the idea of being like I'm the wizard who learns how to fight with a sword. Right. Well, and I think it's probably one of the best defensive ones in the game. Even if you decided never to step foot in melee, yeah, having the extra AC, having the extra movement, dancing around the battlefield, can't get grappled. I'm, I'm never gonna swing anything. I'm never gonna get grappled. I get intelligence to constitute. I'm never gonna fail anything. So you have some fun with it. Um, Multi class wise. Uh, probably what two schools of thought as far as maybe fighter one to pick up concentration or constitution checks for free yeah um and then cleric one um cleric one you can do some crazy things with cleric one like get yourself heavy armor mm-hmm. because i mean yeah have dump it. decks yeah. screw it forget put about a, decks put, put it a 14 wisdom. in strength and now you can wear like what's the scale or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, I think is. you start at 16 plus your decks or whatever. Yeah, but, and, and, or uh, you get shield proficiency. You get so shield you're rolling proficiency. around with 18 AC at level one, and yeah. you still get access to some of the best spells in the game. Healing Word is always going to be good, and the fact that you can upscale it, you know, hey, I got one eighth level slot left. I'm still casting Healing Word to bring somebody back and bless. Bless, I don't think a D4 on saving throws and attack rolls ever goes out of style. Even if you were, that was all you did all day long, I just throw out fire bolts and I cast bless the party is better for you around with one level yeah um the ac bump bless is the best first level spell in the game mm-hmm. bless might be the best second level spell in the game it is it is that good it really is that good it is but, good um so i think um, i think you got a couple of opportunities there you could dip 3 into sorcerer to snag meta magic if you were so inclined to do so um i would only do that if you're going to go into the long game of, of the higher end because that's a long time to sit at second level spells. You're talking sixth level where everybody else is dropping fireballs. You're still dilly dallying around with second level spells. And and then yeah. that's the big thing about the wizard is a lot of them you can forego a, a level or three or four to pick up. Um, yeah, here losing out on spell progression when that is your life is yeah. is a big no no. It has to be it has to be worth it and has to be thought out and you don't do it lightly. Yeah, I mean. It's like one of those things where you multi-class into fighter and you get yourself to like five. You're like, I'm going to be a frontline fighter wizard. I'm going to make myself a blade singer, you know, be like an eldritch knight and an abjurer wizard. And by the time you have that set up, the illusionist is just casts Bigsby's hand. (laughs) And it's just like, yeah, on a bonus action once per round, I can deal with one blow as much as you can do when you action surge and hit with green flame blade. Jeez. Because one is a cantrip that you're manipulating into being good, and the other is a fifth level spell. And that's the that's the harsh thing if you're going to multi class as a caster, is that that two level dip that denies you. You could already have the next level of right. spells. Yep. And I think you have to look at it from a standpoint of. Um, you have to not see yourself as a caster at that point. I'm taking two levels of bard for skills. I'm going to be yeah. more of a caster than a bard, and that's what I am. I'm a little bit higher caster bard. I am not on wizard playing ground anymore. I have abandoned that. I've taken a couple levels of fighter for action surge or whatever. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be heavier. I'm going to be tankier. I get action surge so I can double fireball. But against a real mage, I am behind. So yeah. what are mm-hmm. you? I'm a better eldritch knight. That's my goal. So you are you're creating a different subclass. You're not getting a lot of benefit. Yeah. I will say adding one level of cleric is is a pretty good benefit because now all of a sudden you're adding healing and bless mm-hmm. to that wizard duel. You might be able to give up that thing. That might right. help that saving throw over the whole person or something like that. So a couple of options in there. Yep. Um, and and don't don't do it willy nilly. It has to be probably a level one almost type thing of. We're starting at Planet level out. three. I am yeah. I'm here, and then the rest of my life I am wizard because 18 gets awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So that's wizard. Um, build? 
You want to talk about a build? Yeah, time? We could probably squeeze one quick one in. All right. There's only one build with Wizard, which is exploitative and let, like you need to watch out for. It's a Diviner, and not because Diviner can replace a roll of a d20, which is already busted. Xanathar's added a spell called Mind Spike. Mm -hmm. It's a I'm divination it. spell. It deals like 2d8 damage, I think. Um, it's concentration, which makes this a little bit harder. But at 6th level, when a Diviner casts a spell of 5th level, or um, between 2nd and 5th level, when they cast a Divination spell, they get a lower level spell slot back. Oh. So you could have a Diviner who, round 1, they cast Magic Missile. Like, it doesn't even matter. Free damage. That's just what they're trying to do. And then their second turn, they cast Mind Spike, which is 2d8, save for half. Guaranteed damage. And now their first level spell slot is back. A Diviner can cast... I did the math where it's like a ninth level caster with a fifth level spell slot. If you just keep ramping up, you have... I think I got to like 40 spell slots. Wow. It's the only thing, and normally it's supposed to be like, all right, the Diviner, you know, you cast Magic Missile for this battle. It's like, and then you cast a Divination spell to learn some things. You get Magic Missile back. Right. Mind Spike gives you damage all day long. And I played it. I did it, and it it actually did work. Because it was just like... Which character was that? I was like the... We, we were fighting the Giants going through remember we had to like go up this mountain and we went through this valley mm -hmm. i was playing a wizard oh, okay yeah yeah. I do... yeah 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 uh what's Heart the killer's horn? yeah yeah and it was one of those things where i never ran out of spell slots i, I cast polymorph like three times I yes think. you did or it's yep, just like what are we that. gonna okay. do it's just like i'm just gonna cast polymorph it's like because i'm because why not i'm gonna get the lower level spell slot back so why not start with casting yeah. a fourth level spell and then a fifth level spell and now you've got another fourth level spell that seems pretty sick. It is. And you can basically cast Mind Spike at second level through fifth level all day long for whatever amount of damage, save on half, psychic damage, which nothing resists, all day long. <laughs> 49 times or something. That's sick. And it was one of those things where it was like, because I think my character didn't get a long rest. You were like, you've been in the mountains and you were gone from everyone else and you've rested and you slept, but you didn't get the benefits of the long rest. I think you returned somebody somewhere. I, yeah, I was busy doing stuff because I missed a session. And I was like, cool. Because it just, it didn't matter. Because the thing, like the big thing for a wizard is running out of spell slots. Yep. Because if all you're casting is cantrips, I mean, you can do it. Uh, yeah, I cast a lot of cantrips tonight. <laughs> cast a lot of cantrips tonight. Because once you're out of spells, it's like mm -hmm. you're, you have lost... Imagine if a fighter halfway through the day lost half of his class features. Yeah. Like, it's like you no longer get second attack. That's a wizard's big downfall. You get it him is. to cast a bunch of spells, and then you come at him a second time. Yeah. Diviner never runs out of spells so anymore. So when you're playing a wizard, you have to balance that casting of cantrips and then know when to use your spells. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not a diviner. That's disgusting. Yep. And then eventually there's going to be like cast a finger of death and it's uh like 7d10 plus 30 jesus and uh, uh don't worry about whatever you roll because i'm gonna replace it with a one <laughs> let's say i like what is it sickening radiance and sickening radiance. force cage yeah force cage so sickening radiance is uh Whenever a creature moves into the spell's area for the first time or starts their turn there, they make a constitution saving throw uh, or take 40, 10 radiant damage and suffers one level of exhaustion. Oh, shit. So technically you only have six levels of exhaustion before you die. Yeah. Oh, right. Uh, was it Force Cage is a 10 by 10 square. Here, I'm going to just cast Sickening Radiance over there. Wizard 2, cast Force Cage. You're stuck in there. And now we play the waiting game. I just need you to fill six over the next, you know, and even if you come out of it, you are mangled and horrible and weakened. And, yeah. yeah. So there's some, some shenanigans. I would like to see a, 
an all There's wizard some party or something. You're just like, uh, I do I always want to see the mono class party. But I, I'm looking forward to it. it. I know I'm excited to play a wizard. Um, I haven't played a spellcaster with the exception of a cleric that I just played on the side. Um, so it's going to be fun to try this. Yeah. And I, I'm excited to see you play, Zach, play the wizard in Scarlands because there are some different spells. In fact, you were able to cast a Scarlands spell uh, during the last, I during did. the next episode that's coming out next, next week. Next episode, mm-hmm. yeah. So What was it? I don't remember. <laughs> but I did cast one. I took one because mm-hmm. I was like, I want to take at least one. That's yep. why I took Filch. Yeah. Yep. Like, yep. And you cast Filch, too. I did. We cast Filch. I did. And we'll be playing the same. You're an evocation wizard, mm-hmm. right? We'll be playing the same kind of wizard, but. Although now I'm thinking I should have rebuild him. <laughs> nah. No, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's something new for me. So. Yeah. Say, at the end of the day, all you do is you sculpt spells. It doesn't define how you yeah. are as a wizard. So. Yeah. You could have five evokers in the same group, and all you do is just super careful where you drop whatever poison you yeah. choose to dish mm-hmm. to people. So. I, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop Sickening Radiance down because my friends continue to make their saving throws and take no damage. Yeah. It's pretty hey, and it's just see like that cloud. Don't worry about it. Trust me. Trust me. Yeah. yeah. And then, but you could also. You, I trust your withered. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> but then you might have another one who's like, I'm going to cast Storm Sphere. Right. Yeah. I'm going to cast it on me. So anyone who wants to come close has to deal with that. Yeah. And then I'm going to blast them with lightning. That's two. I think the same level spells, and an evocation wizard can both use them completely differently. Mm-hmm. That's just how you want to go. That's sick. All right, guys, we've come to the end of our show, so that means we get to tell people how they can contact us, which if you want to talk to Zach, you You just contact me at 307RPG, and I will relay the message. So, Nolan, how can they get a hold of you? I am on Facebook at nlameres at N-L-A-M-E-R-E-S, and that is also my Gmail if you have a question you want to shoot me an email there um, or tag me on Twitter. And, of course, I'm Patrick, and you can reach me at, at 307RPG on Twitter and Instagram, the, the Forge Herald on Facebook, and, yeah, that's about everything. That is. Guys, All right. Thank you so much for listening. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Bye.